In this video, we are going to create dynamic images based on a user's interaction with your website. We're going to do it with two methods, SVGs and sprites. Let's dive in. Hi, I'm Kyle, the creator of No Code Collab, a site with tips, tricks, and tutorials for your next No Code project. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and be sure to head over to our website where we have code snippets and other resources to help you during your No Code build. Okay, so here I am inside of Figma. I've got an icon of a dog and method one that we're gonna use, and I like to use this method, which is using SVGs or scalable vector graphics. It's basically translating your image into some code and then you build the browser kind of like builds the, the image. And so it allows us to manipulate colors, which because we're building it on the fly in the browser, we can blend and we can have different easings on the image. So it gives you that nice fading, that subtle fade from, from color to color if we want to do that. The key to using SVGs is that your image or your icon needs to be all in, in vector. It needs to be in vector format. You can't just drag a PNG into Figma, export it as an SVG, and then and then do what we're talking about. You have to have all of the individual pieces. You'll see here, if I, if I hover over, all of these are, are different vector uh, shapes and lines. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to export our dog icon. I'm gonna come over here on the right and I'm going to export as SVG and I will then export dog. And you'll see here, I've got my dog. And what I want to do is I want to open this dog with text edit. So I can, I can open it in a browser and it'll open just like an image or you open it with text edit. And now you get all of this stuff. This is the code behind the image. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy all of it. So copy all of that code. And now we're gonna head over to Webflow and I'll show you how this is done. Okay, so here I am inside of Webflow. I've got my two containers for my two different options. On the top here, we're gonna show you the SVG option. So the first thing I do is I'm going to add an embed block into my container, as you can see there. And then what I'm gonna do is just paste in that code. So. I've got all of that code and I'll just expand this to make this a little easier to read. And you'll see here, if we look at Figma, these ears are the color 262. They start with a 26. And then the eyes also start with that 26 as well. So that's the color I'm looking for because I want to swap that color out when we hover over this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for that anything that is stroke or fill. So here I come and each line is a different part of the image. So here I've got a fill that is that 26. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in current color. And what this is going to do is when I apply a class to this element, whatever my typography color is set to, that will then put that color right into these elements of this SVG. So I've got my current color. Be sure it's all one word. Make sure that the, the capitalization is the same. Current is lowercase. Color is capitalized. These other ones where I have a stroke of black, um, I'm going to leave those because I want to keep the stroke. I still want to keep it black. I don't want to update that. You could update it if you wanted to. I'm, I'm not going to though. So now I'm just going line by line, either looking for stroke or fill. So now here's my others. So there's a fill and I'm going to type in color and and color. I've actually got strokes that are different here. Let's make these black to be consistent with all of the other strokes. Cool. All right. So now if I save and close that, I've got my dog icon here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a I'm going to call this uh, dog icon. 
And notice here, when I set my, my typography color, it's going to update the image that we have on the, for the dog, the color of the ear. So if I go red, you'll see that it updates to red. If I come and go do green, that's great. So it's working. So now what I can do is I can go like this. I can say, let's make these threes for a dark gray. And then I want to on hover, I want them to be like a, a blue, maybe a little lighter blue. Yeah. I want them to be kind of that bright blue. There you go. So on my hover, now, if we look here, when I hover, I've got a different color because this image is being built on the fly. It's using the current color. Now, what's really nice about this SVG method is I can put a transition onto this. So if I can, if I say uh, text color, typography, font color, and I'm gonna make it really long. Let's make it like two seconds. And I want it to be ease, ease it out. So now when I hover over, you see how it slowly moved from one to the other. It was a little, it's too long, but it's slowly transitioning from one color to the next. So you can get a nice effect if you have other easings on your site. So let's make this maybe 300 milliseconds. And now I get a nice kind of ease in and ease out. I could even, if I wanted to, I could have on pressed, I could add another style. Let's say I wanted to go to this gold when I press it. So now I hover and now I should see how, when I click, it's going to, going to that gold. So this is the SVG method, uh, because it is scalable, you can have different sizes of your icons and it will, based on the class, you can shrink it and grow it and it'll look sharp at all different, at all different sizes. I do want to take this one step further because this SVG method is really powerful when you combine it with collections. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just create a quick collection. And let's call it, let's call this uh, just colors. And I'm going to, in my settings, I'm, I need to add a color. Okay. So if we save this field, I'm going to save this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is gold. And I'm going to choose, that looks like gold. And now let's create two more. Let's call this red. Looks nice. And let's get a green in there. Ah, uh, let's go purple. So now, okay. So now I've got three colors. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is add a collection list into my little container here. I'm going to connect it to my colors template. And let's just on this list, I want these, let's, let's make these uh, horizontal. Yeah. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my dog icon into my item. Okay, so now I've got three items here all behaving as expected. All that I've done is dragged in my dog icon. But the cool part now is because each of these collection items has its own color associated with it. What I can do is I can go dog icon and I can get my text color from colors. Now I have dynamic images that have different colors based on the category or based on the collection item. So if you've got a, a blog and you've got um, news events and something else, you could have three different colors for those different categories. If you've got different 
team departments and you're, you've got a team page and you've got your HR department, they're going to be green and you've got your accounting department and they're going to be blue. You can now have different color identifiers next to these people or products. If you've got different departments or different categories of products, you can have icons that have a dynamic color. Uh, added right in. So that is the SVG route. It's super powerful because you can have nice easing between your different colors. And you can also have dynamic images show if you have different categories of things. You've got different product lines. You've got different departments on a team page. You've got different categories for like a blog, a blog or something. You can, you can dynamically update that on the fly based on the colors of, of your different categories. So that is method one, that is SVGs. Now let's look at sprites. Okay, so we are back in Figma and we are looking at what's called a sprite. Now sprites have been used on websites uh, for a long time. And basically what they are is you've got all of the different states that you would ever need for your, for your image all in one image. And then what you do when the page loads, that image with all of the different states loads up right away. And then what you're doing is you're setting this image as a background image and you're just moving the, the sprite back and forth to the desired position of the state. It's all going to make sense because that sounded really confusing. The nice thing about sprites, before I show you how to do it, the nice thing is that you can use PNGs, you can use JPEGs, you can use whatever you want. Because what you're doing is you're exporting and you're loading up a PNG file. So if you don't have a vector version of your, um, of your image, sprites will work. Also, if you want to change more than a color, sprites would be a good option. Let's say you wanted the dog's ears to like flap up, right? Sprites would be the better option because you're not going to really build the SVG on the fly with the dog's ears flapping up. You could design it and then load that into a sprite. So here we go. So we've got our image here that's got both of our states. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna export this as a PNG. So I've got my dog PNG. And now let's head over to Webflow and I'll show you how to build it. Okay, so we are inside of Webflow. I've got my second option container here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little div. And let's call this the, uh, the dog, dog image. Uh, dog image 2. Let's call it dog image 2. Okay, so I have, let's say I'm going to set a height of 4 rems and a width or a width of four rems and a height of, so I've got a square cause I know my, I know my dog is a square. Okay. And that's important. You need to understand the dimensions of your, um, of, of the end icon of, of the, the icon. So what I'm going to do is my background image is going to be, I'm going to choose my image and I will upload my dog one. It's the same as before, but now you can see, now I've got this corner of the ear. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cover and I'm going to position that so that it's right in the middle on the left side. Cause you remember, I've got the, the darker ears on the left and I've got the blue ears on the right. So I'm going to position that on the left side. And then what's going to happen is when I hover over dog image, I am going to move the position of that sprite in the background. I'm going to move it to the other side. So I'm going to move it to the right. And so now effectively what's happening is it looks like when I hover over this, it looks like the colors are like the, the colors are changing, but really all that's happening is the background image is moving. The back. All that is, is a background image is moving. There's no lag in the, in the hover state because I've already preloaded the, the blue because it was loaded in with the gray. And so right now the hover state's already loaded in because I've already loaded that one image. 
so you can see how I've got, got two here. I'll just give you a little glimpse. If I were to make the width of this eight, you can see I've got both of my, I've got both of my states, but I'm shrinking it down. And now that's how this is. That's how this is working. I'm just sliding that. You could have another state for pressed, another state for focused. You could have a bunch of different states in your sprite. Some sites used to have one huge sprite sheet and they would have all the different states of their different icons. And so they would load up this one image that had all of the different icon states. And then they, they would just position that for all of the different icons they had. So they'd have to kind of keep track of it. I had learned it. This was always also how they made uh, Super Mario Brothers. They had sprites or early, early video games would load up all the states of, of the players. And then they would tossle back and forth to, to make it look like he was running because there were different states or jumping or, you know, whatever it is. So sprites have, have been around for a long time. You can be more flexible because you don't need to have vector graphics. You can, you could change this from McDonald's to Taco Bell when you hovered over it. Right. The problem is you don't have the nice easing and the transitions between colors like you do with, uh, with SVGs. And you also can't dynamically create them from your collection items. So that is, that is sprites and how to create dynamic images with, with sprites. One thing to note is that you don't really need sprites. You could just have two different images, a default and then a hover, and then they just swaps from default to hover. That would totally work as well. Sprites were popularized back when internet speeds weren't as fast. And so what they would do is they would put all of their icons and everything on one image and they would load that up because once that one image was loaded, then you were good to go. Now with internet speeds being faster, you could have multiple images. There will potentially be a little white gap. The first time someone goes to hover over that, that button or whatever it is that hover over that image, because it's got to go and retrieve and then load in the new image, right? So you could have a, a little gap. So it would maybe be cleaner. There's going to be fewer calls to the server. So it's, it's not a bad thing, but you totally could just use multiple images instead of building out a bunch of sprites. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful and now you have a better idea of how to update images on the fly based on how people are interacting with your website. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the chat. Otherwise we will see you at the next tutorial.